Well, I turned 16 in May. I've got my period, so I've passed that stage of womanhood. But I'm not a woman yet. And I just realized that there's a lot of change happening inside me and in my life. I look for change in my life because I know it never stays the same and I want things to move forward in my life. But it's always scary when they come. My biggest fear in life is death. And that, I mean, it's something that I think about every day and I don't like to think about it. It scares me. I'd like to deal with it and come back with a different understanding of it. In this culture, adolescents are nobodies. They have no power. And yet they've gone beyond childhood. They're like airplanes that are allowed to go to the end of the runway and rev up their engines, and rev up and rev up, but they can't take off and we haven't given them a way to get to adulthood. You got to be a certain age before you can drink. You got to be a certain age before you can have a driver's license. It's not anything that you have to do to become a full adult, except just stay alive. In the Inyo Mountains of Eastern California, a small group of teenagers have come together for 11 days to mark their transition into adulthood. The core of this ceremony is living alone, without food, for three days and nights in the wilderness. These teenagers are guided by Stephen Foster and Meredith Little, a couple who have developed this rite of passage see, over the past 25 it. years. Drawn from many traditional cultures, Aborigine, Native American, European, this ceremony includes three challenges, solitude, fasting, and exposure to the elements. I knew when I woke up from that hospital bed that I had never really lived before. I had never lived, I just wanted to live. I never had a chance to enjoy what life was really about. I was always living on that different level, that reaction, no thinking involved, just reacting. When you almost died, were you aware that you, almost, you were almost dying? I was in the mountains and I got stabbed. So I thought, I knew I was dying at that point. You know, there was no question in my mind because I got stabbed in the head. <clears throat> and I was just bleeding, 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 just trying to find someone to take me to the hospital because it was just chaos. It was a huge party, huge party, huge party. After I got stabbed, everyone started fighting. It was just chaos. And then I found my girlfriend and she just got me in the car and we started driving down the mountains, but we were like 35, 40 minutes away from the hospital. My whole life was just flashing before my eyes in reverse though. Things that I did, things that I didn't do, that I wanted to do, just things coming and coming and coming. And then I passed out and I woke up five days later in the intensive care. Because they had to do brain surgery, but I didn't know nothing about it. Nowadays we have the big lie. And the big lie is that we are different than nature. That human beings are different than the land that they live on. So there's this beautiful dance that you have the opportunity to watch between yourself and the environment and how we mirror each other all the time. 
It's a wonderful way to see where we're at. So now we're going to leave this place where you've been camping for these four days and nights. We'll be going down into the valley and then up into the mountains where we're going to be fasting. We start. The group will stop at Stephen and Meredith's house to make last minute family phone calls on their way to base camp. John is taking his own truck and plans to join up with the others at the house. John didn't make it. He told us he was going to meet us here and we're just gonna have to go without him. We're going to leave him two messages, one on the phone and one at the door, about where we're going. And we'll see if he, if he shows up. Okay. Yeah. Let's get on the road. Okay, you guys, let's go. On the way. Get on the road. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you just about missed us. We are just taking off. We've been waiting, waiting. We're going to have to do some mending of people's that. feelings. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I got held up. I ran into my Navy recruiter. Oh. Might have known the Navy would get involved in this. <laughs> mm -hmm. 